Hello everybody, welcome. I'm Gretchen Heidel, full-time astrologer, life coach, Reiki master, and so much more. And I am here broadcasting live tonight, both on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, and it is March 1st, unbelievable, 2021 already, March 1st. So welcome everybody who is joining me live. I'm going to be going over this week in astrology from March 1st, all the way until March 7th. So welcome everybody who's joining me. Go ahead, like and share, like and share with your friends, tag people that you know. And as always, I love to hear where everybody's watching from. So if you could please go ahead and type in your astrological sign, where you're tuning in from, how it's going for you. Corbin, hello, Scorpio, welcome. Um, I forget where you're from. I know it's from the South. Um, so welcome. Uh, so like and share, like and share, and please go ahead and post below your astrological sign. Um, and I would love to hear uh, where everybody is tuning in from. Um, I am going to be going over, there's a lot of different energies going on. Hey, Rita, welcome. <laughs> Almir Taurus from Vermont, welcome. Uh, we have Katie uh, Scorpio from Chicago on Insta. So welcome, uh, Katie. Thank you for, for uh, tuning in. Sheila uh, from uh, Tubac. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Arizona, Capricorn, all is great. Uh, Marianne, welcome. Aries in Vermont. Corbin, oh, that's right, Atlanta. I should have, I was going to guess Atlanta, but I, I forgot. Uh, Gail Pisces, birthday next Monday. We'll be celebrating uh, uh, Gail's birthday, or Marianne's birthday uh, next Monday. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, Gail's birthday. Yes, I'm, I'm looking at two screens here. Um, Andrea Aries from Vermont, welcome. Janet, you made it. Welcome, Pisces from uh, Vermont. Let's see, Juliet. Um, yay, Taurus, Libra, Rising, Moon in Capricorn, welcome. Oh, uh, Margaret, Shelter Island Aquarius. How you doing, Margaret? I uh, miss you. Welcome. Uh, Jane Moonwolf. We have uh, Sagittarius Shelburne on here on Instagram Live. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me. I'm going to just jump right in. So we have a semi-busy week. I don't know about you guys. A lot of my clients, including even myself last week, it was a little bit kind of weird energy. I don't know if you guys noticed that. It was like a little off uh, last week, <laughs> the energy. Um, oh, hey, Brian. Welcome. Brian is joining us uh, live tonight on Instagram. We had just a lot of lot of stuff going on last week. We had that Mars uh, trine uh, Pluto last week, if you guys remember correctly. Um, and then we had also the full moon in Virgo. So a lot of people were kind of off last week. I don't know if anybody experienced any of that. Um, but it was just kind of that energy, the Mars trine Pluto, which I told you guys is not a great energy. Um, and that was last Wednesday. And then over the weekend on Friday night going into Saturday, we had that... Uh, full moon um in virgo and oh i had a lot of people monica said yeah last week was very off hey uh gretchen welcome um there's another gretchen on here <laughs> um so yeah so uh this week is a little bit more we'll say gentler okay mars is gonna be active again this week um so we do have mars in gemini uh coming on the third so three three um uh mars is gonna be in gemini it switches into gemini at around 10 30 p.m eastern time so earlier than that if you're on the west coast at at 7 30 p.m uh iris said yes yeah, it was a really wild week last week. Uh, you know, people just, a lot of people were saying that they felt really off, off kilter. Mars trying Pluto was not fun. I'll just say that it was uh, contentious. A lot of people were saying they had like a lot of headaches and high blood pressure, inflammation. That was all last week. This week, uh, not to say it's like over just like that, but this week is a little better, a little quieter. Uh, KT678 uh, has a lot of numbers there on Instagram said crazy week but better today yeah that's how we will be experiencing this energy um, Mars is going to be going into Gemini 10 30 p.m. Eastern time um, on Wednesday and so what that means Mars will spend about a month and a half in Gemini okay so all the way until April 20 Third, I think. Let me just double check. Yes, April twenty third, Mars will will uh, be in Gemini. So starting on three three to four twenty three. 
Oh, yes. Janet, you had a very bad week, okay? A weekend, at least. The, Janet was uh, almost trampled by her horse. Um, so we're going to send Janet lots of loving energy and love and light because her body is really sore because she got, like, kind of tossed around uh, because of a crazy mishap situation so thank you uh corbin said beautiful pendant um it is a clear quartz uh brian uh pendant that's actually a john of god pendant um so you know whatever you want to think about that but <laughs> uh but yeah it is a clear quartz crystal and it's a healing crystal and it helps me to be able to channel better C clear quartz crystal uh channels helps to channel a little bit better and easier so um but yes everybody please please send um janet some uh some good loving light uh energy uh please um Rita, my mother, um, I don't know what is going on with your computer. It happened last week and it's happening this week. You might want to sign off and sign back on, but it keeps coming up that you're watching, you're watching, you're watching. So I don't know. I think there's something wrong with your tablet. You might want to like restart it or something. Um, but you don't have to do it right now. I'm just saying that there's something... I think there's something wrong. Okay, so anyway, so um, <laughs> Mars is going into Gemini. Now, what does this mean? So Mars just spent the last month and a half in Taurus. So Mars is the god of war. So remember, it's not always fun energy with the god of war. But you can think about Mars as energy, okay? Mars is our motivation, our drive, our ambition, our get up and go, and our pushing through, and our figuring things out. Mars and Taurus, Taurus t tends to be a little bit more um, financially focused, uh, security driven, uh, definitely that Mars is like slow and steady wins the race, slow and steady wins the race, you know. Um, and if you yourself are either a Taurus or a Scorpio, you really felt this last month and a half, okay, of that Mars and Taurus energy, it's really, really... Um, I don't know. It's it, it's just like a slow but steady, but it can also be like right up in your in your Mars Taurus, you know, kind of area. So um, you might have been feeling that. You might have been feeling a little bit more edgy, aggressive, and of course, Mars is inflammation in the body. So there's that. Hey, Danielle, welcome, and Colette, welcome. Capricorn in Vermont, Colette, yay. Okay, so anybody else on Instagram joining live? Um, but yeah, so we have a lot of, <laughs> my mom said our spirits are interfering. They're very active right now. Yeah, it's 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 been like that. But now we're switching. So Mars is going to switch into Gemini this Wednesday, okay, 10.30 p.m. And so what this means is all the Geminis and Sagittariuses will be getting a boost, okay? A, a, now, Sagittarius is in opposition where Gemini will be getting the direct sort of hit. I will tell you, Mars is, so in astrology, planets are either sort of classified as beneficial or malefic, okay, meaning that they're not as fun. Mars is considered to be a malefic planet, not a beneficial planet. However, Mars is our ambition, our drive, our motivation, and our get up and go. And it's our sexuality, by the way. I can't forget that either. Um, it's our sexuality, uh, you know, not just, not sensuality. It's our like sort of more primal sexual kind of stuff. And that's Mars. Okay, so Mars is going to be heading into that Gemini for another month and a half, roughly. Uh, so it'll be it'll be there uh, between now, this Wednesday and then going into February, or I'm sorry, February, April 23rd. Uh, so we'll be feeling that. Okay, it'll be all up in our stuff. And so if you have Mar, if you know where Gemini is in your own astrological chart. You'll need to know how this will affect you on the personal level. And when I say where, I mean in your astrological house. What house is it in? So, for example, the house of Gemini is in my area of friendships. Um, yes, I happen to be friends with a lot of Geminis, and I, I love Gemini people. Um, but Mars is going to be there. So not, not only could it mean a fight or an argument, okay, that can mean that. Mars is the god of war on the sort of negative side, but on the positive side, it can give us a lot of um, drive, ambition, motivation in the Gemini sector. So I might have more, uh, you know, activity in my friend department. So it depends on what area of your chart 
um, it is, uh, you know, that you would need to know. Now, let's say you don't know your chart. Let's say you don't have a way of figuring that out. You can always just kind of, um, how do you get along with Gemini? You know, is that a sign that you tend to get along with? Is it a sign you don't? I, excuse me, I personally know everybody, that, <laughs> like their astrological sign that's in my life. So, I know how I get along with certain signs. So it's one of those things that um, you'll get a boost of energy. Now, what I have found on a personal level, so let's say Mars is in your zodiac sign. Initially, I find, on a per, and I've seen this with my clients too, it'll be zippy. It'll be like a really like more active energy. So Wendell21 uh, on Instagram here, um, she said that she has Gemini and, uh, and also Sagittarius in her chart. So see, she's going to be feeling that head on. And Andrea, yeah, you have, you have a Gemini moon and you have Gemini Venus. So you'll be feeling that in your, in your, in your area of emotions and your love department. So, um, by the way, it's not a bad thing when Venus and Mars get together, you know, men are from Mars, Venus, women are from Venus or whatever that title is. Uh, so there, that can be, you know, a little, Hmm. <laughs> a little boost in the, we'll just say springtime is coming. Okay. So basically it's one of those things that, uh, we'll just be getting an increase in motivation. Now in my own chart, when Mars, like, let's say Mars is an Aries, cause I'm an Aries. When Mars goes into Aries, at first it's like, yay, Mars is an Aries. And I'm like cleaning the house and I'm getting a bunch of stuff done. And then all of a sudden there seems to be a tipping point with this energy with like when Mars is in like whoever's sign, it just all of a sudden goes from like zippity doo dah to like, oh, I'm edgy, grumpy and frustrated, you know, because it's like I get impatient. We all get impatient. By the way, Gemini is not known for being patient either. <laughs> That's why Aries and Gemini maybe are friends. I don't know. Marianne said she has Mars in, in Gemini. So you're going to have your Mars return, uh, Marianne. So you'll be feeling extra Mars. Okay, you'll be feeling this extra. And you might even really have uh, a little boost. It's like having uh, three espressos without actually having to drink the caffeine. You know, so you'll have a little bit more zippity doo dah uh, going on uh, there. <laughs> Melinda, Melinda, so that's why I started polishing the silver. There you go, girl. Um, and when you think of Gemini, Gemini is a very zippy sign. You know, Gemini tends to be more of a hyperactive sign. We're just going to say that. Um, and a sign that, um, I don't want to say, I don't want to say that all Geminis are ADD, but you know, they, they kind of have that trait, you know, that trait of like being like all over the place and sort of scattered and frantic. That's when Gemini is a little bit, um, not grounded. That's how Gemini is like tend to be. It is a sign that is, that it's associated. Um, it's ruled by Mercury. So when you think of Mercury, you think of Gemini, Mercury is the yin side of, or sorry, the, the yang side of, uh, Mercury. So it tends to be a little bit because Virgo is the yin side. So um, Gemini is more the yang side. So it's very active where when you think of Virgo, Mercury rules Virgo and Gemini. Uh, Virgo tends to be very heady. Geminis too, for sure. Geminis are very heady as well. So if you're a Gemini, just be careful. Okay, be careful because Mars can, you know, bring on like sometimes accidents. Um, when you think of Gemini in the area of body, Gemini is really like the arms, the, so the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and the hands, okay? So when you think of Gemini, you want to think about like that that sort of area. A lot of Geminis I know have like carpal tunnel or tendonitis of the wrist or some kind of a thing. But also the bigger thing that we need to know is Gemini is the lungs and respiratory system, okay? So, and last I heard COVID was still going on. Okay. And I just saw just before I was coming on that the numbers are starting to go up again. And I think a lot of people are getting complacent again. And so, uh, you know, I'm telling people, especially if you have Gemini on your sixth house. Okay. That's the house of health. Um, Wendell said, no, she's not patient at all. <laughs> that's funny. Um, 
The sixth house of health, okay, is respiratory. So you want to take really, really good care of your respiratory system. Um, uh, Brian said, how do I figure it out? Well, of course, you can call me for a personalized astrological session where I go over everything. I do sell just birth charts, just to let you know. I think it's $39.99 for a natal birth chart for me if you want to get that done. Um, uh, I can send it. It's a, it's a computer, and I can email it to your email. Um, but... Also on astro.com, you can go in and there's a free like wheel and you can look at your wheel. Um, but anyway, if you, it would be good to know because everybody has Gemini. I get that confusion a lot. A lot of people say to me, well, I don't know what, you know, uh, what area, you know, things are or like, you know, I, I'm a whatever Libra and I don't have Gemini in my chart. Well, you do. Everybody has all 12 signs. It just depends on if there's any planets there. The moon, Mars, Venus, Mercury, or even some of the asteroids. Uh, what's going on in that area of your chart? It's good to know. Um, and even if it's empty, it's on a house. So the house basically is going to be influenced, like meaning that sector of life is going to be influenced by Gemini. Like I just said, um, I only have one planet in Gemini, um, and that is my Juno sign, who my ideal marriage partner is. Um, but that's it. So I, but my house is the house of friendships and I have a lot of Gemini friends. So I'll just say that I, I tend to be attracted to that energy. Um, I like people who are very energetic. I'm energetic as well. Not quite as energetic as they are, but, um, I feel like it matches and Gemini's are very interesting people. They're, um, they're very curious and lively and they talk a lot. And I, I resonate with that. Uh, Juliet Mar uh, says um, her Mars and Venus is in Gemini. Well, you're going to be really, you'll get a Mars return as well. A bunch of people are getting their Mars return. Uh, Danielle said she never knew that about the body. Yep, every astrological sign has an association with the physical body. And I am telling people, really watch. Co you know, the north node of the moon right now is in, is in Gemini currently, current time. And then Mars in just two days is going to be moving into Gemini. So we really want to watch, like, we can't let down our guard, okay, with that, because that's respiratory system. Not good. We don't want to, we don't want to do that. So make sure everybody's wearing your mask still and doing all that. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we have that. But then also on the same day, on Wednesday, we have Venus forming a sextile with Uranus. So you heard me just say Gemini is going to be active and then Uranus is going to be active. Venus currently is in Pisces and that's going to be forming a sextile with Uranus in uh, Taurus. So basically, whenever we activate any of the mercurial signs or the Taurus or the uh, Uranus signs, Mercury or Uranus, both of those planets are sort of in charge of the technology and how we stay connected and how we share information and they're kind of the two live wires of the zodiac now this venus sextile uranus is a positive thing sextiles are great um in other words these are two elements that get along with each other pisces is water taurus is earth Water and earth get along really well. Earth needs water, okay? Um, and water even needs earth as a container, a beautiful container. So when we get Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, getting along well with Uranus, which is in Taurus, um, that can mean like sudden or kind of weird things happening in the love department and or finances. Venus can be uh, finances as well. Um, and so, and Tauruses can kind of be finances. So that means something kind of crazy, quirky, out of the norm, out of nowhere can happen. You can have a sudden flirtation with someone uh, that you weren't maybe expecting. Um, this is also, if you're single and, look, and looking, okay, uh, this is a time where you could be, be attracted to someone who's totally, totally different than your type, which actually I think is usually a good thing. Um, a person could be culturally different from you or have a different religious background, whatever, different upbringing or whatever. Um, but that can all be good stuff. It's just, you're going to have to remain, be open because it can be really unusual things happening in that department, uh, both love and financial department. Uh, Brian said, yep, it's tax season. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. Um, Wendell said, yeah, so she has a Sun, Mercury, Venus, Chiron, and Juno in Gemini. That's a lot of Gemini, girl. Yeah, you got you got the prize on that one. Um, <laughs> uh, Joanne said, hey, hey, Joanne, hi, how are you? You need an appointment ASAP? Well, text me, girl. Texting me, by the way, if you need an appointment is the best way. I don't mind text text messages on, on on my phone. Okay, so Venus forming a sextile with Uranus, that's also happening uh, on Wednesday. The height of it is going to be at around 12.09 p.m. Eastern Time three hours earlier if you're out on the west coast okay so uh it's one of those things that um on wednesday we might be feeling a little cray cray uh we might be feeling a little you know rushy a little anxious a little swift and and maybe maybe too much so so you want to work on wednesday really on grounding grounding yourself it's hard to ground oneself when you're in an air sign gemini mars okay mar gemini is an air sign so think of a balloon and if the balloon is not tethered it just kind of floats away so we need to tether ourselves or to ground ourselves. getting outside is a good way to do that um, taking a, a hot Epsom salt bath is a good way to ground. Even eating a little piece of chocolate is a good way to ground oneself. Um, and of course, you know I love my stones. Um, but using uh, some kind of healing crystal or stone, this is a piece of dyed howlite, H-O-W-L-I-T-E, howlite. And this howlite is definitely the stone uh, for Gemini, okay? I love howlite for Geminis. Now, when it's not dyed, this is um, a blue dye uh, that was put on it, but I like it anyway. Um, but when it's not dyed, it literally looks like marble. So it's white and it has these like sort of darker threads through it. So <laughs> Brian said a day at the spa. Now, Brian's got a good idea here. That's a great way to ground oneself is to get, you know, uh, a nice massage or a spa bath. Yes, beautiful ring. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about maybe this one. Um, Jane, uh, uh, Joanne said, <laughs> this is the Opulenza ring. I do sell these this jewelry. Um, and I think this one, I think it just got discontinued, didn't it, Joanne? Um, but it's Labradorite, okay? Um, and that's good for Gemini as well. I like, I like Labradorite. Any of the blue stones, I wore blue a little bit tonight because we are going to be talking about Gemini and Gemini is communicating. So that's the blue chakra. Um, and that's the throat chakra. So Gemini is communicating. But remember with Mars going in there, the God of war, we could be a little too aggressive with our communication. So we want to watch how we approach things. Um, and kind of slow down, especially if you're a Gemini, especially if you're a Sagittarius, okay? And I'm going to talk more about Sagittarius tonight, too, uh, because that's going to be the sign um, at the fourth quarter lunar cycle, okay, uh, is going to be Sagittarius. Um, so, or even Pisces or Virgo, okay, because that's all the mutable signs that are going to be feeling this, uh, definitely. So, if if you're one of the air signs, so if you're, if you're, um, uh, Aquarius or if you're Gemini or if you're Libra you will definitely feel an increase in energy for sure so you'll, it's going to activate all the air signs if you're a fire sign this will this will increase your fire okay if you're an earth sign or a water sign that's not quite as yay like air goes over earth and then if if air and water combine, <laughs> that's like a hurricane or a typhoon. So, so those signs don't do as well with this Mars. Um, also, this Mars is going to be activating um, a lot of the planets there in uh, in Aquarius, which will be quite interesting. Yay! So we're gonna get we're gonna get some extra energy, um, I think. So that's Wednesday. So Wednesday. Wednesday is the height, you know, the peak of that uh, Venus sextile Uranus. So we could even start to feel it Tuesday, going into Wednesday, Thursday. And then speaking of Thursday, then we go back to Mercury. Mercury is going to form a conjunction with Jupiter. And those two are going to be in Aquarius. Okay, so that's going to be on Thursday the 4th. Okay, Mercury forming a conjunction with Jupiter and that's gonna happen at almost 10 30 at night 
uh, p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. So that's going to increase our communication, okay? Um, especially being in, a, in Aquarius right now, that's going to be a lot. So uh, again, that's an air sign, and that's all about... Aquarius is definitely like a quirky, unusual sign, you know, that is considered to be like you guys are the change makers of the zodiac. So you guys are always doing things outside of the box. So whenever we have Mercury forming a conjunction uh, with with Jupiter in that sign, it's going to increase our vocalization and talking. This is great if you have to give a speech, if you're in sales, listen up. If you're in sales, listen up. This is Thursday's your day. Okay. Um, if you have to write something, if you're writing a book or if you're writing poetry or if you're uh, a songwriter, anything you can do to orate, speak, and again, if you need to activate your throat chakra, as somebody said about, this is not a lapis necklace, Wendy, this is um, silver uh, diamond cut um, balls and then it's a clear quartz crystal. Um, I should start selling crystals and, and jewelry. Somebody, somebody suggested that to me. Um, I will be working on that. Um, but you want it when you have something you want to convey. I do have a lapis uh, bracelet, okay, um, that I'm wearing because I am activating that blue color, the blue energy, because that's that is the. No. Oh, you sent me a loud. Oh, I haven't gotten it yet. Um, I think it's at my office, Wendy. I haven't been there in a long time, so I'm going to have to go back and get it. Um, so anyway, so this is this is um, uh, my uh, lapis bracelet. So we're activating blue energy for the throat chakra. And being able to connect, a lot of us have trouble connecting our heart to our throat and speaking from the heart. I don't know why it's so vulnerable to speak from the heart. Um but a lot of people have a lot, a lot of problems communicating with, with their authenticity. So this is going to help if you are one of those people or if you're a shy person, this will be helpful. Now, let's say you're a blabbermouth that always is talking a lot. You're going to have to reel it back, <laughs> okay, because this is going to make it even more so. So practice listening. I mean, a lot of communicating is not just sitting there thinking of what you're going to say next after the person shuts their mouth. Like... It's about truly listening and being interested in what other people have to say. So keep that in mind. Remember that. Um, also, we might be really feeling, I know I, I'm even feeling this with COVID and everything. We might be getting some wanderlust coming with uh, within us. Uh, because whenever we activate Mercury and we're activating Jupiter, those two are big time travel signs. Um, and normally I'd be like, book a trip, go to India, have some fun. We, You know, it's like, oh, I can't do that right now. So like... I'm, I've been watching every night. <laughs> I'm going to let you in on Gretchen's world. I've been watching uh, YouTube videos on um, van conversions uh, or, you know, because I want to have like either a van or a little RV. Yes, I'm manifesting as I'm speaking. Speak your dreams. Speak your dreams. Uh, put them into reality. So that's what I'm doing. And um, I keep fantasizing about getting a little RV or something. So... <laughs> That's how I'm that's how I'm living out my wanderlust. So as we get into Friday, then we have the um, fourth quarter lunar cycle, which is also called the last quarter lunar cycle. Okay, and that's where we're halfway between the full moon and the new moon. Okay, so um, the new moon, full moon basically was last week. It just happened on Saturday. So we're already almost a week into it on Friday by the time we get to the Friday. 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, okay, earlier than that if you're on the West Coast at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Brian said, Nomad Land, great movie. I've never seen it. Thank you, Brian. Um, uh, let's see. Jane Moon Wolf said, Perpetual Wanderlust. Yes, you do. You, have, you do have Perpetual Wanderlust. I forget. What's your ninth house, Jane Moon? But anyway, Friday is the fourth quarter lunar cycle, and that's going to be in Sagittarius, 15 degrees Sagittarius. So again, activating all of these mutable signs. So Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, and Pisces, all will be feeling this last quarter lunar cycle. Now, unfortunately, last quarter lunar cycles or any of the quarter, the half moons, um, 
they tend to be times of a crisis or a time of a reevaluation or a time of, um, I don't know, just a time of something kind of coming up or happening where you have to like look at your plans and see what the deal is. See, we just got done having the full moon and we were releasing and letting go. You know, this is like the full moon is the endings. So the last quarter lunar cycle is almost like a, I call it the second chance full moon. Okay, so it's when things are wrapping up, finishing, need to be cleared out because the new moon's coming in another week on the 13th, March 13th, and that's when we want to um, plant the new seeds for our future. So the full moon is about harvesting. The last quarter moon is about clearing the field and really make sh making sure the branches, the leaves, the debris, everything's off and because we're getting ready to plant the, the during the new moon. So when we use farming as a um, an example, that's basically what the deal is. So, oh, uh, Jane Moon said ninth house Leo, but North Node. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go, girl. Um, I I uh, so again, we might be wanting to really travel. Sagittarius is about traveling, and it's about traveling long and far distances. So if you think of Gemini. Gemini is like local excursions or like your, the next date over or some kind of thing where Gemini is distant or sorry, uh, Sagittarius is distant lands. Okay. So Gemini's weekend vacations, weekend trips, getting around town, uh, you know, going to the next date over, staying in the mountains for the weekend at the ski chalet or whatever. That's Gemini. And then Sagittarius is like Europe. India, Africa, you know, it's like those big trips. Okay. So that's getting activated. It's also, um, the area of legal, uh, Sagittarius is legal in our chart. Uh, so if you are embroiled or in any kind of legal endeavor, including real estate too, um, people don't realize, but real estate largely is legal stuff. So, <laughs> um, so anything pertaining to that, that's going to be something coming up on Friday. Um, publishing is another thing, advertising and marketing, um, all taking place on Friday. And that's the reevaluation. So we we're going to have to reevaluate re something. Remember, we're moving the sticks, the twigs, the debris to get the field ready for planting. So we might have to like take another look at our plans and really see, is this going to be working for us or is it not working? So there's that. And then basically, I'll just touch on this very briefly. Next week, if you are a Pisces, okay, next week is going to be very active for you. Okay, the new moon is going to be in Pisces, and there's a lot of Piscean energy next week. So it depends on where Pisces is in your chart. Pisces is going to be feeling a lot of energy next week. And already, when we talk about Pallas Athena, the goddess of war, the strategy of war. So if you think of Mars as the god of war, he's kind of like the the commander in chief of war. Pallas Athena, she's the goddess, the strategy of war. She's like the master chess player, okay? And so um, she's going to be moving into Pisces, okay, on Sunday, and we're going to be, we'll be getting some more Piscean energy. There's a lot of Pisces energy active. So what does that mean if you are Pisces? Well, you might be planning, thinking, strategizing about something in your life. Um, uh, and definitely when we think of Pallas Athena being in Pisces is kind of odd because she's the strategy of war and Pisces is all about feelings and emotions. So, uh, you know, there's more stuff around feelings and emotions. We can't seem to get away from those from those feelings and emotions. So if you're watching this broadcast live, like and share, like and share, tag people. It is a public broadcast, so you can tag people. Um, if you f feel someone that you know wants to watch it, please remember to give me those likes, hit that heart button, and uh, because that's what makes the algorithm go up and then other people get notified that, you know, that I'm on and, and it helps to create the good vibe. So like, 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 like. All right, so. If anybody has any questions about any of that stuff, uh, please feel free to type below. And also, if you have um, any questions for me, again, I'm, I'm going to take questions. And I'm also going to be talking about um, or pulling a card uh, for everybody for the week. You know, I always do that. I pull cards for the week. So um, thank you. People are giving me a lot of likes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, and so, yes. Uh, 
we have a busy week. It's not going to be as busy or as contentious. Thank you on Instagram too. Um, you guys are the best. Um, it's not going to be as busy and as contentious as it was uh, the previous week. Okay, it's going to be a little bit of a quieter week, but we can't forget Mars being the god of war. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. You know, he he is the god of war and. He can be he can be a little pesky and troublesome. Remember, he's considered to be a malefic in astrology. Mm. Okay, Wendell said Wendell on Instagram asked me a question, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with her. Um, she said she has a lot, a lot of planets. You do. She's the one with five planets in Gemini. We're all gonna say a prayer for you, Wendell. <laughs> um, it will give you a lot of energy in that department. Um, Mars can really give us the case of the shoulds. I'm being told that when I'm talking to you, Wendell, but everybody benefits from the messages. So um, Mars can really give us, because it's like our action, our drive, our ambition, like I should be doing, I should be doing something, I should be doing something. And people are going to be getting really like antsy, even more so. Um, <sighs> this COVID thing is just so annoying. So, all right, Wendell, what do you need to know? What, what is Wendell's guardian angel? Spirit guides, uh, what does she need to know? Okay. And I think you need to be more easy on yourself for sure. Okay. All right. Express your inner truth. Express your inner truth. Express, that's the card she got. Express her inner truth from Archangel Gabriel, if you guys um, can see that. And I'm going to read you the message, Wendell, okay? Your creative work shines brightest when it reflects your genuine feelings and thoughts. I feel this is not pertaining to a career or a creative endeavor. I think it's a person. Um, but having said that, I feel that you're supposed to be expressing yourself, expressing your truth, um, being authentic. I just talked to you about you guys about how Gemini, we just talked about how Gemini is creative, how it's the throat chakra. It's expressing one's truth. I can't tell you how many people have the hardest time. I've even probably in my life too, um, had a hard time at some point or another uh, with expressing myself, my true feelings. We can blah, 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 blah all day about the Kardashians and the weather and the COVID and all the different things. But to talk and express authentically how we feel is really, for some reason, scary and petrifying. I don't know why it's so hard for a lot of us. Um, by the way, I brought this. I was going to talk about this earlier. These are all my blue, good blue stones here. Um, this is kyanite, blue kyanite. And kyanite is special because it's said to instantly align the chakras, instantly balance and align the chakras, okay? So kyanite is really, really special, um, and it never needs to be cleansed, which is really a blessing, okay? Uh, kyanite's a blessing. Um, so I would say definitely something uh, that you can do to heal your heart, Wendell, but I think you need to just be real, express yourself, um, and... Uh, you're getting the card. Try, try, try again and you will succeed. Okay. So I would say keep going, Wendell. All right. Hope that helps. All right. We got a lot of people. I only, I only pick, um, those who I'm guided to, to, uh, talk to. Okay. Monica said she already put her lapis necklace out. Awesome. If you guys have lapis, this is another blue stone. I just showed you my bracelet a little while ago, but this is one of the most healing uh, stones there are. I usually give people lapis when they need to have surgery. Okay. Um, it's a really good card for that or a really good stone for that. Lindsay, what path should my love life take? Ooh, girl. Let's see. I always switch around different cards when I'm guided to. What path does Lindsay need to take? What path does Lindsay need to take in her love life? Ooh. Lindsay, things are always up and down with your love life here. <laughs> you got the wheel. Okay. What's, what's down must come up and what's up must go down. It means that there's a lot of change in the love, uh, love life here. Um, I'm going to ask for more information about what she needs to know. 
Um, there's a lot of talking and communicating. Are you going to a counselor or some kind of a thing, Alenzi? Because I feel like there's somebody that you're getting extra advice from. And also you got Jupiter, which is the card of legal. Okay. So there is stuff on the horizon, Lindsay, we'll just say, without getting overly personal on a live broadcast. There's a lot of um, changes, ups and downs, but also legal and you need to talk to somebody who is a professional, either a counselor, maybe even an attorney. Um, but I would say that it looks litigious. Okay. That's what it, what it looks to me. So I hope that that helps and I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry that you're going through that. Let me ask, let me ask this. I'm going to ask something different. I'm going to ask what does Lindsay need to know for her best self for her best, like what can help her to support her, guide her through this time? Blocks lifted. Okay, blocks lifted, Lindsay. Okay, so whatever blockages you've been receiving before, previous obstacles came from fear and they are now being lifted away, Lindsay. So this could help you to get like the bravery uh, that you need or the gumption you need uh, to be able to work on yourself. Okay. Blocks are getting lifted. Okay. All right. Nobody's asking. Hi, everybody that's joining on Instagram. Welcome. Yay. I love seeing everybody here. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to answer some questions here. Oh. I'm answering the question from Melinda. Her daughter, Molly, is due any day now, and I'm really getting a hit on the 4th, so you'll have to let me know. What is she, when, I forget, when when is her due date? I feel like it might be at the end of the day or at nighttime, overnight, something like that. It feels like, it feels nighttime, so maybe even if, um, even if labor starts early in the day, Molly could uh, go actually deliver the baby at nighttime. Okay, just I think it's going to be a nighttime, early morning baby. Just to let you know. Tell her I said, um, Molly, hang in there. We love Molly. We're going to send her lots of good birthing, okay, energy for her safe and happy, happy birth. Okay, uh, Melinda? I hope that helps. Um, so I'm just looking here. We have, oh, we have a lot of questions. Okay. The 5th. Okay, yeah, I think it's actually going to be on the 4th or maybe overnight between the 4th and 5th, okay? So it's just, she's coming. She's coming. It's. I actually think the baby's going to be here soon, okay? Hope that helps. Janet, yes, I think you should. Um, well, first of all, I think you should give yourself some time, Janet, because I definitely think that um, I feel that that would be... Uh, good for remember Janet's the one that was thrown by the horse we need to give her lots of love not many people are posting tonight uh but we want to give Janet lots of love so if you can if you can send Janet a thumbs up lots of love we would appreciate that um uh what does Janet need to know about her health yeah I think I think you should talk to somebody I just the big thing with you Janet is I feel like I feel like it's your shoulder. I don't know why I feel like there's a lot of pain or something rawness in the shoulder area, Janet. So you might want to get that checked because, you know, we're not getting any younger. Ugh, I wish I wish we were. <laughs> Maybe like Benjamin Button or something. I don't know. Um, but yes, uh, lots of love, Janet. Yeah, send her Reiki. Send her all the good healing. I feel like your shoulder, Janet, is the big the big affected area, okay, um, of your body. So I hope that helps. Um, and let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, oh, Deborah, you got an, uh, a job offer in Massachusetts. Is it a good time for a move, Deborah? Yay, everybody sending Janet love. Hi, everybody on Instagram. Welcome. I haven't, um, Let's see, Deborah, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a card. So, let, what does Deborah need to know about moving? Is this the right time for her to move? You gotta move, honey. You gotta move. This is like this is like one of those. I feel like you're gonna get a big raise or something. There's some kind of a thing. The only thing is, 
Okay, I'm just going to say. It's like you get a lot, like you're getting a lot more money, but like, do you really love that job? Like, is it doing something that you truly love? That's my big question. Or is it just the money? You know, is it one of those things? Because that's going to be a little bit hard um, because there's, there seems like there might be a lot of stress and pressure associated with this job, Deborah. But I think you do have to move because the money seems pretty darn good. Okay. I'm just going to say that the, you're getting excellent money cards. Um... This is this is love, money, and creativity, Deborah. Uh, but this is you have to love what you do, not just do not just do it for the money necessarily, because there's a lot of pressure. This is grace under pressure, so there's a lot of stress, or it could just be the pressure just from moving itself. Okay, but and you might be juggling two things, Deborah. I don't know if Deborah's still on; she hasn't commented, but. You might be you might be juggling with two okay or more things with this job. It's like complicated because um, I don't know if you have to go back and forth or like what you have to do. Um, I almost feel like you even if you move, you still keep coming back or something. There's some kind of a feeling of like almost like you're juggling two places or something like that. And it's interesting, but um, I think you are gonna move. I think you should move. I think it's gonna be good. It's just. Remember to know that you have some stress and pressure with this and that you, but it seems like good money. It really does. Oh, she has family. Oh, you have family. Okay. So maybe that's why you're going back and forth or something. There's something you're juggling. I hope that helps. All right, Monica, I'm going to take one more and then we're going to do the big collective card. What do we need to know for this week? Are you on the right career path? I'm going to say ask about careers. You said creativity. I can't I'm going to only take one question. That's kind of trying to build two questions into one. Um, so let's do, um, let's do what does she need to know about uh, career. On Instagram here, what, is, what does Monica need to know? My mom is killing me with this. With this. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with your computer, Mom, but you got to fix it. It's, it's just, we know you're watching. Ooh. We got a card that fell out, Monica. Birth. Card of birth, okay? So, Monica, you're getting new life, such as a baby, an idea, happy news, or an exciting new project blossoms within and around you, okay? Um, so, Monica, you're getting a great card on the, on the career path that there's something new coming, some kind of a new area, um, new job, uh, possibly even you opening up a business or starting a side a side gig or something. I kind of almost feel like a, an entrepreneurial side gig thing with you or so, something's uh, brewing. Um, and, and you also got the money, okay, um, the love money and creativity card as well, all mixed into one, okay? So, um, so it's that. So I feel like as if you definitely have a really good... Um, um, opportunity there for your for your um, for your career okay career choice so um, you hate being told what to do Monica <laughs> just gonna say that I really think you should I don't know if uh, Monica if you're still on or if you're listening um, you haven't commented here on Instagram so um, but uh, I feel like as if you, um, you kind of need to be working for yourself. I really do feel that, that that's a thing or 1099 or something, uh, because you tend to, um, you don't like it. You don't like people telling you what to do. You don't like having a boss. You like being the boss. Okay. So, so please. Okay. Monica, um, uh, go in, go into it. Okay. You, you don't trust yourself sometimes. That's the problem. The problem is you don't trust yourself. There's a lot of like feeling of, um, I can't do it. They're not good enough. A lot of other people do it, but so I can't do it. Like there's some kind of a feeling of like, there's a lot of like internal dialogue going on there. So I don't know. I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Yay. So, um, we are at the end of the broadcast, and as you know, I like to pick a card, okay, for um, the week. What do we need to know for the week coming up um, for this Mars in Gemini, okay, Venus sextile Uranus, Mercury conjunction with Jupiter, and then the last quarter lunar cycle on Friday, and even Pallas Athena switching, switching into her 
um, Pisces princess warrior outfit, okay? <laughs> I like to think of those goddesses as, as badasses. Um, uh, we have a lot of god energy, like ma the masculine. A lot of the, the planets are masculine, but, you know, Pallas Athena, she's, she's, a, she's a lady, okay? Yes, you're welcome, Monica. I hope that helps. You really got to believe in yourself. That's the big thing. Okay, what does everybody need to know about this week coming up? What's it going to be like? What's the what's the deal? Okay, all right. Vision board. Okay, if um, people can see vision board. Okay, this is Archangel Gabriel. Vision board card. Um, create a board with images and words that inspire you. Um, that fits with the very much with the Gemini theme of like journaling, speaking, talking, doing you know, like communicating, all of that stuff, but get a lot of Gemini ideas, like they kind of like swirl around us. They're, they're very, it's like, again, that, that Gemini is very lively. Okay. Vision board. Okay. What you want to do. I was even thinking about journaling or doing something, you know, do a mind map. I don't know if you, any, any of you have, I just before this broadcast, I was coaching somebody. You can get a mind map. There's a lot of mind map apps, by the way. You can just type in your search apps. There's a lot of free mind map apps, meaning that like write down what it is you want. What, what do you want your future to look like? All kinds of stuff because we are going to eventually, and I should probably do a broadcast about this. Maybe next week we will do that. Like what does it look like after we, after we move into a post um, quarantined world where we're starting to kind of step our big foot out into the world and, and uh, you know, some people are getting vaccinated already and like they have, um, you know, whatever. So, so what, what do we need to know for this next step? And I think right now we really got to focus on that, especially as we get into the spring equinox, you know, in astrology, the spring equinox, which is coming uh, March 20th, is really the astrological new year. It's not January 1st, okay, in the middle of winter. It's the spring equinox, okay? That's the, um, it's when the sun enters Aries. Then we have the spring equinox, which is the beginning of the new astrological calendar. The last, that's when the, uh, the ending of Pisces season is. That's the last sign of the zodiac. And then we enter the first sign of the zodiac, which is Aries. That's the astrological new year. And then we have International Astrology Day, okay? All on the spring equinox. So what do we want our life to look like? Do a vision board, do some journaling, do a mind map, do some kind of a thing. Uh, because that's, we need to head, you know, where are we heading? And that's a good thing. Um, oh, Monica said on Facebook, we have a couple Monica's here tonight. <laughs> on Facebook, um, I began a vision board project and let Oh, Valentine's Day interrupt. It got buried, but it's time to lift it out of the a collage pile. I love collages, so collaging is fun. Jane Moon Wolf said, thank you for sharing your wisdom and insight with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Andrea, thank you, Gretchen, she said. You're welcome, everybody. Please take great care of yourself. Take good care of your nervous system because that Gemini is the nervous system, okay? And I will see you all next week. If you want to book a personalized astrological session, text me on my cell phone or send me a DM, but I like text better. And uh, please go over and like me on YouTube. I'm building my YouTube channel. Um, uh, Gretchen Heidel, I'm the only Gretchen Heidel on the internet, which is really fun. So I hope everybody has a great week. Wishing you all lots of love, good health and blessings, prosperity, and you guys go get it done, that Mars and Gemini.